Hey everyone, Anita here. How are you all going? And today's video is going to be all the books I have given five stars. Because I started keeping a track on the star ratings of my books a year before I did booktube, I may be forgetting some books. There are some books that I may forget why I have given five stars to these books. And uh, I think upon further reread, like if I were to reread these books, I might still give them a five star read. And also, I may not. I don't know. It depends. Just because these books are five stars does not mean that they are a favorite of mine. Five star ratings mean different things for different people. Some books is just because it just has that feeling. And then there are other books where it's like the plot and the characters and the writing and everything in general is just amazing. Let's just get on with it. The first five star book that I'm going to be talking about is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. This is so incredibly whimsy. I absolutely love it so very, very much. I'm scared to, to reread this book because I'm afraid if I do reread it, I won't give it a five stars. I'm just so nervous about it. It's just whimsical beauty. I absolutely love it very, very much. Storytelling. There's stories within stories. It talks about video gaming. I think one of the characters, I think the main character does video game theory or something like that, like gaming theory. I can't remember what it is. This book makes me want to play video games again. I miss it a lot. Definitely a favorite of mine. I just, it just has that feeling for me. I can't explain why other than it's, it's whimsy. The story behind it about, um, like guarding stories because people are increasingly not keeping track of stories. They're not preserving stories. They're too busy on their phones and just it's just incredible it's just i love it so very very much the next book i have to talk about is sharp objects by jillian flynn is it jillian or gillian i'm not entirely sure but i love this book it's like a dark thriller it was incredible i really like the twists and turns i like the darkness of it i need to i have one last book of jillian flynn i have to read which is dark places or the dark place or something like that that is the last one i have to read i hope she writes more books because i just love this one then i have some series as well i want to talk about um the song of ice and fire the a Storm of Swords, Part 2, Blood and Gold. I don't remember why I gave this five stars. I think it might have to do with the politics. Maybe the world building, maybe the characters. I don't remember why I gave this one five stars. Dance of Dragons, Part 1, Dreams and Dust. I loved this one so much. The, the politics at play and the chessboard maneuvering was just so good. I feel like this book is a dark book like it's dark it's gritty it's gory this is kind of where things take a bit of a turning point another book that is definitely a favorite of mine i f i feel like this is a favorite of mine if i were to reread it station 11 by emily st john mandel i love this author's ability to beautifully intertwine things and her writing is beautiful the it, like jumps between the past present and a little bit of the future because this book um takes place during like before after and during the pandemic and just her writing is so beautiful in this one i love this book very much i actually think on goodreads i gave this a 4.5 but this is definitely five five star material just absolutely incredible I then have the Heartstopper series by Alice Oseman. It is a graphic novel about two boys who fall in love. It is beautiful. It is wholesome. It talks about mental health issues and I loved it. Uh, let me see if I can see properly. Like three and four do have some mental health. Like it talks about mental health and eating disorders and stuff like that. So trigger warnings for that. They are all beautiful books. Highly, highly recommend them. I then have a poetry collection, which is Homebody by Rupi Carr. This is probably one of my most relatable poetry collections, but the problem with poetry is it is easily forgettable for me. I forget about it. Poetry just doesn't have that stickability, like it doesn't stick in my brain a lot. But I do love this collection very, very much. It means a lot to me. It is one of my most relatable poetry collections and I really really do love this one a lot. I then have uh, 7 point no 0 0.7512 2, and 3 in the I can't twist my arm around <laughs> in the Witcher series. I don't know why I don't have Lady of the Lake 
the fifth book in the series in this collection as well, but I really, really enjoy the series. I don't remember entirely why I gave these books five stars. It is a series that I do want to revisit. I do want to reread it because I did read these books back to back to back. Some things may have gotten blended in. I may have forgotten some things. I think it might have to do with the characters and the plot and just the discussion of humans, humans being the monsters and not actually creatures being the monsters. And I really love that discussion. This next one is definitely a favourite of mine. Empire of the Vampire by J. Kristoff, book one in a trilogy. Not a five book series like I thought it was going to be, but a trilogy. Oh, this book, the ending, I need the sequel right now because it was just so damn good. It's dark, it's gritty, it's about vampires and how they have ruled over this place for so freaking long and it's dark out all the time. There's no light at all. They've been in darkness for 27 years. Incredible. Love it. I cried twice in this book. I really, really love the characters. There are some reigning, uh, like, very incredibly old vampires that are so fucking brutal. Beautiful imagery in here too. Let me see if I can find one. I think these images, these drawings, really helped it as well. And I just, I love it so much. It's making me love vampires again. Because the first one I ever read was Twilight. I don't know if you can see it right there, but Twilight was the first one that got me into loving vampires. And I kind of stopped after Twilight, but I got back into it with this one. I then have another book about two gay teenagers. Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe. Oh, this book is beautiful. I like the characters in this one more than I do in the second one. I don't like the second one very much. I love this one. It's about... Well, it's, it feels like a more of a character study. It's just, it does focus more on the characters and the actual plot, and it's really beautiful. It's a very popular book for a reason. I can understand the hype. This next one's going to be a bit of a controversial one, but I gave The Maidens five stars. The reason being because I feel like the reveal was a bit subtle. I can't say why. First of all, I love this cover. I thought the Dark Academia vibes were pretty damn good. Like, I know this book is not for everyone, and I can see why people would not like this book, but I happen to really, really love it. I really do. I then have another J. Kristoff book. I have God's Grave, which is the second book in the Nevernight trilogy. This would have to be, like, the best in the trilogy. It's just, oh my god, this... Is this the Gladiator one? Yes, this is the one that has a very Gladiator like feel to it. You know the movie with Russell Crowe that I still haven't watched yet. I, I loved it so much. Her powers are expanding a bit. I just really really enjoy Mia Kovia. She's a really really great character. Oh my god the reveals, the twists, the turns, the plot is so good. I, I fucking loved this one so much and I also loved and also gave five stars to the last book in the trilogy, Dark Dawn. Oh my god this one really ties everything together really beautifully. It kind of, it's kind of like a, some scenes kind of like blind you to what's happening and then it kind of reveals into what actually happened and it was just done so fucking good. The library is probably one of the most interesting, coolest libraries I have ever read about. Not that I've read many books about libraries or anything. I thought it was a really good solid ending to a trilogy that I really do love. And then I have A Life on Our Planets by Sir David Attenborough. It tells you about climate change, what we can do to make life and Earth a little bit more better or a lot better, what we need to do now because the Earth is warming up, okay, it's freaking hot all the time. It is so good. It's written very beautifully and it gives you insight into how we came to be like this and I thought it was a very, very fascinating read. I really do highly recommend this book. I, I trust David Attenborough. He has seen the world decline, like literally in terms of a climate viewpoint, he has seen the world decline. He's seen forests getting destroyed and stuff. And I, I trust this man. I really, truly do because he gives really realistic, what's the word I'm thinking of that starts with L? Logical. Logical, realistic standards and ideas that we can do to make the world a better place because we will literally burn or drown 
if we don't do something right now. The Silent Patient, a second book by Alex Magalides. This book is definitely better than The Maidens. I still really, really enjoy The Maidens, but I feel like this one is better. And I feel like if you wanted to start reading from this author, I would recommend reading this one first. The plot twist alone and the way it was written to kind of point you in one direction and kind of doing a 180 and pointing you at another direction. It was just so good. Like the writing was really good. That plot twist made me really love thrillers again because I really missed reading thrillers. The first two books in the From Blood and Ash series we have From Blood and Ash and then A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire I think it is. Yes it is A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. I loved these two books very very much. Uh, the first one was good. I love the twist. It's so fun and I really really love the romance between Poppy and Castile or Hawk however whichever I don't really care. Like this world is just so interesting to me. And the second book, also A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, this one is a definitely more romance heavy but I still really really enjoyed it. And that's all I can say, like these books are just so fun to me, they have really opened my eyes into wanting to read more fantasy romance. Scythe, first book in the Ark of a Scythe trilogy by Neil Shusterman. I DNF'd this series. I read the first two and then I DNF'd the third one because I was just not enjoying it. I don't know exactly how I feel about the series now. Like the f it, it's, it does have good commentary about humanity and how we want to live. Like none of us want to die. It's a very, it's a good book. It's a good series. I just I couldn't do it. I couldn't finish it off but it is a very good one. Characters are fine I guess. They kind of feel like the same same to me. I don't really get any differences. I know that there are other books on this list where the characters will feel the same but I think it depends on how it's written. But yeah I'm not a fan of this series as it like generally but that's just me unfortunately. I do recommend it though because it is a good series. With the Fire and High by Elizabeth Acevedo. I really thoroughly enjoyed this book. I really I do not even remember her name oh my gosh but I really really enjoyed the characters in this one. I love the talk about food and how much food means to this main character and how good she is and I love the relationship that she has with her grandmother and her daughter as well. Really beautiful, really wholesome. It, it talks about how food brings everyone together, brings family together and I thought that was a really beautiful thing to write about. The Burning Girls by CJ Tudor. This really put CJ Tudor on the map for me for possible favourite horror slash thriller writers or authors. Oh this book does the thing that I'm starting to realise I really really love where it kind of blinds you to what is going on because the writing is so good but there's also some background scenes about characters that you don't know about and it kind of pulls you in like another direction and you're like oh my gosh that plot twist. And the ending I really love the ending it's just it really is a very good book. I love this one a lot. This next book, A Shadow in the Ember, the first book in Flesh and Fire series. A Shadow in the Ember series. Oh my gosh, what was I saying? Flesh and Fire. A Shadow in the Ember series. Oh my gosh. These two characters, Sarah... Sarah and Nikdos, I f oh my god, they kind of nearly overtook Castile and Poppy as one of my top favorite like couples oh, oh just the tension between them their relationship is so good it talks about the gods and just do recommend reading this series in publication order alongside with the uh, from blood and ash series just oh it was mind-boggling it was so good the smut is like damn good as well i really enjoy the smut in this one i i mm, the sequel is coming out very very soon and I'm very nearly tempted to just stop my reading and just read this book or the next one in the series because it's coming out very, very soon. It, it, yeah, I'm speechless. I love this book a lot, okay? One to Watch is a romance book that I actually really enjoyed. I think upon reread, I will drop this rating down to like maybe a four. But I really liked how it puts a spotlight on how dating shows and how there are some people that actually do want to find love in these dating shows. It just felt realistic to me and it goes to show you how trashy some men are to bigger women. I really thoroughly enjoyed this book. It was really really good. I'm not going to talk about this one a lot because I feel like I've talked about it in like a 
in my October wrap up, but Night Film by Marisha Pessel is so incredible. It's incredible. I gave it five stars. The multimedia formatting I really love. The characters I also really enjoyed too. The story I loved as well. I just love this book. I love this book. I love this book. I love this book. I feel like I talk about it a lot better than I am in this video. So I'll leave it linked in the description also somewhere up here if you want to read it or if you want to know my thoughts about it but it was just so good so beautifully written you don't know who to trust is twists and turns yeah i don't know i just love it so very very much thank you very much for watching everyone i don't blame you if you don't watch this video because holy cow what was this i don't know but anyway if you have thank you you will know what to do leave a comment down below um, have you read any of these books that I have mentioned? Did you give them five stars or did you give them a different rating? Please let me know. What books have you given five stars? I would also like to know that as well. Thank you again if you have and haven't watched this video. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.